think we are ready to get started. We may have some others start joining us as, as the session goes on, but um, everyone joining us this evening, thank you for joining us for the virtual honors college session to more learn more about what happens at Commonwealth Bloomsburg with our amazing honors college tonight. Joining me, I'm Marimani Hausnick. I'm the director of admission at Bloomsburg. Um, Dr. Peter Dorschler is the honors college director at Bloomsburg and a faculty member here on campus as well. And I'm gonna have him introduce our, our current student panelists and then he will start his presentation. And like I said, you can drop questions in the chat or the Q&A and we'll monitor those throughout the session. And again, this is being recorded for future use as well. So Dr. Dorschler. Yeah, thanks very much, Maramoni. Uh, my name is Pete Dorschler. Um, I am the first year experience director in honors and I've held that title for, uh, it's going on a year and a half now. Um, and I just to explain sort of the rest of the administration in the Honors College briefly, um, uh, there's a, a second director, um, Dr. Tina Ensminger, who is the High Impact Experience Director. So she looks after things like study abroad, internships, capstone projects, some of the scholarships that we have available, which we can talk about a little bit later uh, for those types of experiences. And as a first year experience director, I'm responsible for kind of the onboarding process, uh, admissions, as well as the first year experience, which will include the learning community and a lot of the seminars that we offer. We also have uh, a dean, um, Dr. John Hintz, uh, who's from the geography department originally. He's a, he's a full-time dean now, and he oversees the Honors College across the three campuses of Commonwealth University. So that's Bloomsburg, Mansfield, and Lockhaven. Um, I'm also in the political science department, uh, so I spend half my time there and half my time in the Honors College. And I'll let our student panelists go ahead and introduce themselves. Um, Matt, Sanai, and Hannah, uh, go ahead. I don't know we have any particular order, but go ahead and unmute and j just briefly introduce yourselves, um, your year, what you study, and um, yeah, just um, a little bit about yourself would be great. I guess I can go first. Um, so I'm Hannah. I'm currently a junior at Bloomsburg and um, my major is biology pre-med and I'm also currently one of the mentors for the honors learning community. So, yeah. Hi, I'm Matt Yerkunis. I am a junior uh, in the honors college. I'm a computer science major and a digital forensics minor. Uh, I'm also the student government president uh, at Bloomsburg. Um, and yeah. Hi, I'm Sanai. I'm a freshman and I'm studying elementary education and I am a new mentor. So I'll be a mentor next semester. Terrific. Um, and uh, for those of you out there joining us this evening, feel free to drop questions into the chat. Marimoni will be monitoring those. Um, and at any point we can kind of stop and address those. We can have a QA and a at, at the end as well, but our student panelists are here to answer all of your questions. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, this picture, by the way, was taken uh, back in August in front of Carver Hall, which is uh, kind of the heart of campus, uh, the symbol that gets uh, on all of our t-shirts and all of our folders and everything like that, sort of the, 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 the symbol of the university. Um, and this was our first year cohort uh, back in the fall. So we had 185 entering first year honor students. Um, they're all dressed in green, not coincidentally, um, but because we had a t-shirt contest uh, over the summer and we solicited designs uh, from honor students. And then the winning design was printed on this t-shirt and everybody got a t-shirt. So we're looking to do that again this summer. We'll put out the call, we'll have a little friendly competition um, and we'll select a design and we'll have a brand new t-shirt for the entering class. Um, so something to look forward to. Let's see. Not sure, Marimoni, I'm trying to push to the next slide with my arrow keys. I'm not able to do that. I don't know if, hmm. oh, there we go. Okay, just have to use my mouse, I guess. Um, so let me explain a little bit about what the Honors College is. Um, as it says here, uh, we're a select, talented, diverse, close-knit community of students and faculty. Um, we're high-achieving students, um, like all of you listening tonight. 
Um, we've probably, you know, taken a lot of uh, honors courses, AP courses, um, you won awards, um, maybe you're in the National Honor Society, um, all kinds of other accolades that you've gathered uh, throughout your high school and, and even before high school. Um, that can extend beyond academics, of course, uh, into athletics, into the arts. Um, so I think we are not kind of um, unidimensional. Uh, we have a very diverse group uh, of students um, who do many different things. Um, we represent all the different majors uh, on campus here. Um, you know, we come from different areas of Pennsylvania and the country. And uh, we bring to Bloomsburg all sorts of different talents and abilities. Um, we're also very close knit. Um, we are sort of a small community inside the larger university. Bloomsburg's about 7,000 students, uh, give or take. And um, the Honors College is about 400 students. Um, and uh, we are actually increasing the size of our first year cohorts, as I mentioned, this past year was 185 entering students. So we're looking to grow as the university is growing and make honors a, a, a bigger piece of the university while at the same time maintaining that, that close knit community uh, feel. And there's a lot of elements to that, um, but uh, the learning community, the, the, the seminars and um, the, the uh, honors dedicated housing, all of which we can touch upon, um, but there's definitely a close knit community feel uh, among the honor students. Um, Honors College challenges you with daily opportunities for truly innovative experiential learning. Um, experiential learning means doing things beyond just, you know, kind of typical lecture um, and, and exams. Um, in, in the honor seminars, for example, um, they often have components where students are taking field trips, um, they're doing projects, uh, sometimes individual projects or group projects, um, kind of they're going beyond what you might get in, in a typical class. And, and that's what makes them uh, unique uh, to a lot of the other offerings that you might find, um, especially in the general education program. So unique things that are happening, a lot of projects and experiential learning, a lot of getting outside of the classroom and, and doing things. Um, and Honors College gives you one-on-one -on -one support. Um, we had a couple of the panelists mention just a second ago that they um, our, well, Hannah is a mentor and Sinai is um, a mentor who was just hired to be a mentor uh, coming in for next year. And uh, they rep represent one particular um, source of support. Uh, as a first year student, you would come into the Honors College and you would be assigned a mentor. Um, and each mentor has about nine to 10 mentees. Um, and they meet on a fairly regular basis and really are there to support you with any questions you have, um, you know, any challenges uh, that you come across in that first year. And the first year is often, that transition to college is often a little bumpy. Um, it can be academics, you know, that, that um, you weren't quite prepared for, or it can be the, the move away from home uh, and feeling a little homesick, or it can just be um, trying to fit in and, and get that sense of belonging. So, um, our students are here and our mentors are here in particular to offer you that support um, and they coordinate with me and uh, the other members of our staff um, for students who need uh, additional support. It could be tutoring, um, it could be a counseling center, it could be residential life if there's, you know, something happening in, in the dorm, uh, maybe with a roommate, right? These, these sort of very common questions that um, happen um, uh, at any university. Uh, and we're here to support and, and help people with these teachable learning moments. Um, so I think that's one of the real benefits of the Honors College is to have these layers of support in place uh, to, to help students when they encounter these sorts of bumps in the road. Um, any thoughts, questions from any of the students? I was gonna say, we do have um, a few in the chat and there is one in the Q&A. So if you, um, we'll start with the Q&A section first. So um, yeah. a student asked, um, I understand that nursing has its own learning community. How does that work with students who are in the Honors College? Terrific, very good question. Um, so nursing students represent the largest major inside the Honors College. I think we have about 40 or so nursing majors, uh, maybe even a few more. Um, and 
the general rule is that you can't belong to two different learning communities, um, whether that's nursing, um, we have uh, science and tech, we have a creative arts and environmental learning community, we have um, several others. So you have to pick uh, one, and that way, um, you know, you're not taking a space or a seat away from somebody else. Uh, each of the learning communities has, has a cap uh, to it, um, just because of, of the available resources. Um, so if you wanted to belong to the nursing learning community, that's perfectly fine. We, we totally support that. Um, and, but you couldn't be in honors too. If you wanted to be in honors, you would join the honors LC. The good thing is that you could also take part in the nursing LC events if you wanted to. It doesn't prevent you from, from doing that. Um, the difference between the nursing and the honors LC just really quickly or any of the other uh, LCs is that honors is a four-year academic program, right? So we have seminars and high-impact experiences and a capstone project, all these things that we'll talk about. Um, the other learning communities are, are really geared for a first-year experience and then they're done. Um, and, and they're very meaningful and impactful, and it's the reason why we have them. But after that first year, you're done with that LC. For honors, you're in the honors LC, but then after that first year, you may transition out of the LC, but you're still in honors for the remaining three years. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Hey, we do have some others here. Um, I know that students in the honors college will be living in Lycoming. How do students in the honors college meet or select roommates? Uh-huh. Good question. Um, there is a uh, roommate survey that Residential Life does administer. Um, I haven't actually taken it, <laughs> but um, I understand that's how um, you know roommates are are paired together. Um, and yes, Lycoming Hall is the hub of the Honors College. If you haven't been on campus or if you haven't seen Lycoming Hall. Um, we do have an admissions event on April 27th. It'd be a great time to come check it out if you're curious, if that's a, an important um, um, piece of the decision-making that you're involved in right now. Uh, or if you want to come by and, and make an individual appointment just to see it, that's fine too. Um, but yeah, the roommate survey happens. Um, we actually have a few first-year honor students that live outside of Lycoming Hall but 95% live in Lycoming. If you're an athlete, um, athletes live with their teams, um, usually over in Elwell Hall, which is right across the road. Um, and in that particular case, you would still have access to all of the uh, common spaces um, that honor students use over in Lycoming. Um, we did kind of max out the capacity of Lycoming Hall this past year by 14 students. Those 14 students live in the adjacent dorm, uh, Luzerne Hall, it's called. Again, have full access to all of the common honor spaces. Um, so um, it's it's more than likely uh, you would be in Lycoming. There is a small possibility that you would be in one of the other dorms. Um, you can also, I should note, um, have a non-honors roommate. Um, now, that wouldn't be done intentionally by us. That would be your choice. If you have a best friend, let's say, from high school, and the two of you want to come to Bloomsburg, and one of you wants to join honors and the other does not, um, we kind of honor that. And you, by request to residential life, you can room together, um, let's say, in Lycoming and that's perfect. That's great. We, we, we definitely support that. And that way you have that comfort of having your friend and you don't kind of break up the team. Uh, so we do, we do allow that. Hey, do you want to continue with the slides? We do have some other questions, but we can go back to those or do you want to continue with the questions? Yeah, let me, let me go get back to the slides and let me just see first if, if any of the students have anything to add that I've said. Again, a student experience sometimes can be a, a different or have a, a different way of seeing things. So feel free to jump in. Um, any of you, if you want to tag on to anything I've said. I was going to say, I am in Lycoming right now. And exactly what you mentioned, my best friend from high school is actually my roommate. I'm in honors and she is not. So we are rooming together in Lyco, And it's just, it's a good support system to have here. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's, that's um, 
I wouldn't say it's rare. I wouldn't say it's common. I'd say it, it, it happens and we, we encourage it if that's something that you want to do. Okay, well, let me continue then. Oh, I oh. was also going to add yeah. um, about like selecting roommates. Um, I don't know if they still do this, but when I was a senior in high school, they had uh, a Facebook group that was like Bloomsburg class of 2025. And that's actually where I met my uh, freshman year roommate on that Facebook group. So if they have, if they still have something like that, then I think that's a great um, thing to join because you can get to know other incoming students and not only maybe meet a potential roommate, but also friends. So I can speak a little bit to that as well, Hannah. Um, so there are, there is a Facebook group, predominantly this incoming class is really engaged with our Zimi um, social platform. And a lot of students are starting to find each other on Zimi for potential roommates. So if you haven't joined, you should have that information in your application portal that you can also join the Zimi. Um, there's a large number of first year students who are in that Zimi social networking um, opportunity and a lot of them are finding each other. If you know someone with whom you want to live, like Pete mentioned, as long as you and your um, potential roommate are putting each other's names on your housing forms, once Residence Life rolls that process out to you, once you've paid your deposit, you can't select housing forms until you've, you've paid your deposit, um, you can indicate with whom you'd like to live directly on that form. Or as Dr. Dorschler um, alluded to earlier, you simply answer some generic um, personal questions like, are you messy? Are you a neat person? Do you do you stay up late? Do you get up early? Um, in terms of they try to match you in that regard. Yeah, terrific. Thanks. Um, we'll go ahead and move on and take a look at the program requirements uh, for the Honors College. Uh, and we can start with the 10 credits of Honors College courses. So uh, each student has to complete 10 credits, and that's comprised of three three-credit seminars. Um, and the seminars are topical, uh, they're unique. Um, they're not honors versions of existing courses. So I've got two kids who have just made it through high school. My third is a junior in high school right now. And when we look at honors courses, um, they tend to be you know, honors bio, uh, honors English, honors history, whatever. And um, it tends to be kind of more work you know, we're going to add a few more things onto the typical class to make it an honors class. Um, but otherwise, you know, the content is roughly the same. At least that's been my experience. And they've been good classes. I'm, uh, it's not a critique. It's just kind of that's that's the that's the typical setup that, that we've experienced. Um, our seminars are, are unique offerings. Um, and we have hand selected faculty that uh, we feel are among the best uh, faculty at Bloomsburg, and we've asked them to uh, put together uh, seminars specifically for honors. Now, these uh, seminars are capped at 20 students. I'd say the average is about 14 to 15 students. We have one this semester that's six, um, and we have a couple that are that are full at 20. So the average is about 15. And as I mentioned on the previous slide, uh, there's a lot of experiential learning going on. So they're really not supposed to have much, if any, traditional lecture. They're not supposed to have um, traditional exams, multi, uh, multiple choice or, or written exams. Um, they're supposed to have projects, uh, collaboration, um, again, field trips, um, creative projects, things like that. So one of the things that makes honors really unique is, again, unlike what I think of as the high school experience, which is kind of adding on more work um, to something that's that's already in place. Um, for us, it's just a different experience, not more of the same, but a completely different experience. Um, and yeah, the seminars can be rigorous, they can be challenging, um, but the point of them is really to offer you a different experience, small, experiential, uh, collaborative, discussion-based, uh, that sort of thing. And they have unique topics. Uh, again, these are professors, um, you know, research interests or ideas that they have been, you know, salivating over for for decades to be able to teach. Um, and and finally, they get to do that, and they get to to create something really uh, important and meaningful for for them, uh, and and teach it to honor students. Um, so. 
what have you the to the panelists um i don't know if there's a particular seminar that you've taken or anything that you'd like to kind of offer as an example i have a couple examples too but i kind of see if you have anything you'd want to add there I can definitely add on that the courses are just, they're more niche and the students are more involved in them as compared to a traditional course that you would be taking. Um, you look around and they're the people you live next to. And I think it should also be highlighted that the Honors College has a lot of the classes take place in Lycoming Hall as well. So you might roll out of bed at you know nine in the morning, you have a class at 10 and you're walking down the hall with the people you're going to class to. So it's really cool in that sense. Um, and yeah, I would just say that they're they're a lot more involved and they get you to branch out as well because they might be classes that you might not have thought of taking before, but then you see it and you're like, oh, I'll just fulfill an honors college requirement. And then you get in it and you're like, whoa, this is actually pretty cool. So it gets you to branch out and that's, you know, that's good for you. Yeah, I'll mention too that um, all of the honors courses count for general education. So it's not um, an add-on. To what you're already doing you think about your major program maybe you'll double major um, a lot of honor students do or add a minor or two and suddenly your plate becomes pretty full and you add general education on top of that you know you are you know you've got four years there where you have a, a lot of um, things that you're trying to juggle um, the honors seminars are not designed to add additional things they are in place of uh, the general education requirements. You can take more than three as well. And I, I think a lot of students do because they like the honor seminars um, in place of maybe other in intro level courses that you would find throughout the university. Um, and let me just give you a couple of quick examples that, that I've seen recently. Uh, I was in a class just a couple of weeks ago, um, Professor Venditti uh, in biology, completely outside of my field, political science. And uh, she's having her students work with sea urchins and uh, in vitro fertilization of sea urchins. Uh, so something really, you know, for, for a general education class, not the kind of thing you would typically do, but, but the students will love it, you know, this really hands-on project uh, and, and really interesting. Another course uh, last semester, I was taught by an English professor, Dr. Francis, and her class was on Arthurian themes and literature. So Arthurian meaning King Arthur, uh, medieval literature is, is her focus. And for a final project, the students had to collaborate and create board games that incorporated um, you know, images and symbols and, and themes from the literature into the board games. And then that they invited faculty to come and play the board games uh, with them during the finals period. So those would just be a couple of examples. And I think a lot of the courses offer that sort of thing. So that represents nine out of the 10 credits, going back to the PowerPoint there. Um, the 10th credit is connected to our senior capstone, if you look all the way down at the end, the last bullet point. So the senior capstone final project, um, informed by one of the high impact experiences, uh, students will sign up for one credit at least. Usually it's just one, but it can't could be more. And that allows them to uh, work with, contract with a faculty member who will oversee that capstone project. So that's where that 10th uh, credit comes from. Um, after the credits and the seminars, uh, we have 16 hours of volunteer uh, service per academic year. So winter breaks, summer breaks, um, you know, you are more than welcome to use experiences of at home uh, to count towards these these volunteer service hours. Um, that's perfectly fine with us. Um, attendance at two events. So one university curated event and one in-house honors event. And that's one of the things that our mentors do is to create and organize um, and host um, honors events specifically uh, for the first year cohort, but sometimes they are expanded uh, so that all honor students could take advantage of them. And we also have an executive board uh, made up of students in honors that um, host a lot of events too. So I think just this week's newsletter that we publish every Monday, what do we have like four or five, something like that different events um, that we are offering? Um, a pickleball clinic uh, for any of you who enjoy pickleball. 
Um, we are doing a rafting trip um, on the Delaware River. We are doing, um, let's see, we just had a take a pause for honors. That's a pun of P-A-W-S, where we had uh, therapy dogs come and uh, students could interact with the dogs, make stress balls as a de-stressor sort of event. Um, we do academic events too. Um, we are going to have a, a speaker come in and uh, uh, talk to us uh, for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Um, we just had a professional development day uh, where we collaborated with the Office of Alumni and Professional Engagement. We brought six um, Honors College alumni to campus and our students got to network with them, have their resumes reviewed, do mock interviews. Um, so I hope that gives you a taste of the different uh, events that we do. Um, again, students, is there a particular event or service opportunity that you've been involved in that kind of jumps right to your, ju jumps right to mind as um, something that was fun or meaningful to you? Um, so I know like a lot of times in the fall, we do a bonfire event. Uh, we did it for the past two years. And I really enjoy that. And I know a lot of the first year students also enjoy that because you're kind of able to connect with people who you may have not really um, like had a chance to converse yet with. So I know when we did that last fall, I met a lot of the first year students that I didn't really know before because they weren't my own mentees. So that was really nice. Piggybacking off of the bonfire, I did go to the one, um, the beginning of the school year. And yeah, I met a lot of people like from the building who are freshman year honor students like me. And it was just a good way to like branch out, meet new people and just eat s'mores by fire at the same time. It was really fun. And just a good way to connect and meet everyone. I participated in a rafting trip my freshman year. And it, just from that trip, I made three lifelong friends off of it. So yeah, here we are today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. Um, and uh, for the volunteer service events, um, we have one coming up, uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend. We call it the big event. And the big event is a community cleanup day. Uh, a lot of organizations on campus participate, uh, honors included. I believe we have 80 honors students, maybe there's even more at this point, who are going to volunteer their time on Saturday, um, wake up early, um, you know, once on a Saturday at least and uh, uh, roll into town and uh, help especially elderly members of our community kind of clean up their yards and, and get ready for you know their gardens and beds and things like that um, so it's a really nice opportunity to connect with our community and uh, show that um, the university and the honors college in particular are really engaged and care about our, our community so um, yeah, that gives you a taste of the volunteer service hours and the events. Um, after that, the two high impact uh, experiences, uh, one major, one minor. So what is a high impact experience? These are things such as study abroad, uh, faculty supervised research, uh, any sort of leadership experience that you might uh, take on. I think Matt mentioned um, being involved with um, the Community Government Association, CGA. Uh, and uh, or a professional internship. Um, and there could be other things as well. This is just a, a kind of a, a sampling. Um, so the minor high impact experience, um, let's use study abroad as an example. Uh, we have four faculty led study abroad programs going uh, this summer. Um, one that I'm leading is to Salzburg, Austria. Uh, students are gonna spend three weeks taking a course uh, called Turning Points, which uh, refers to turning points in European history, which is um, the period defined um, World War II to, uh, I'm sorry, World War I, Great Depression, World War, World War, World War II. Um, and uh, if students want to, an honor student can designate that as either their minor or their major high impact experience. Um, if it's a minor uh, experience, then they would write, in addition to the course that they're taking, they would write a five to seven page reflective paper, you know, the, 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 um, the meaning uh, and the impact uh, on them personally, professionally of their uh, study abroad experience, you know, not just the course that they're taking. Um, and we have other study abroad experiences uh, going on this summer. We have one to Morocco and one to Italy. 
And uh, we've got another to Belize uh, that was unfortunately uh, canceled, but it has been in existence for many years and I'm sure will come back uh, next year. So lots of opportunities there. Um, the major high impact experience uh, turns into the capstone uh, you see in the next bullet point right there. Um, and typically, again, the major can be any of those examples that's listed there, but typically it is uh, research that comes out of a student's um, uh, field, um, something that they're working on. Um, and this is what really academically uh, gives the honors college. Um, it's, it's kind of the, the step up uh, from the non-honors experience at Bloomsburg would be um, all of these things, but academically, this um, meaningful um, uh, research project uh, tied with um, a faculty supervisor, and um, it culminates in typically a 10 to 15, sometimes longer, uh, research paper, something that can be shopped at conferences. We have a couple of students um, attending an honors conference uh, this coming weekend uh, up in Albany, New York. Um, we also have a reception at the end of every semester where students uh, present their research or their projects um, uh, to each other. And we invite the entire honors community. Uh, it's fully catered. Uh, we have awards. We honor uh, graduates. Um, and we have a chance to go around and talk to um, all of the authors uh, who have put together research projects um, that are, again, high impact experience, but they're really then turned into their capstone project, their culminating academic experience uh, in the Honors College. Um, and Matt, Hannah in particular, I know Sanai, as a first year student, I don't know if you've thought about uh, your capstone project yet, but Matt, Hannah, I don't know if you have anything that you could share regarding those, some things that you're starting to think about or work on. Yes. yes. Oh, I'm again. sorry. Nope, you're good. Okay. Um, so I haven't actually uh, like written mine yet, but this summer I'm going to be doing research with one of my professors. So that is what I'm going to do for my capstone. And then I'm actually part of the old program for honors, which um, doesn't include a minor impact experience because it's five classes. Um, so I don't think I'm going to be doing that, but for the capstone, I'm going to do research. Mm -hmm. Do you have a topic for your research yet? I don't. I'm still working on that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I can say, uh, so I'm in the new honors requirement program, um, and I am, I'm doing my high impact experience on uh, something I did last summer. So I interned abroad in Berlin, Germany. Um, so that is my high impact experience. And then I'm planning on doing my minor impact experience for an internship I have lined up in Chicago this upcoming summer. So kind of double dipping there, getting work experience and knocking out my uh, honors college requirements. Yeah. And where do you think all this is going to lead, Matt? I mean, um, what what impact have these internships had so far? Is it giving you a direction that you're looking to go? I mean, OK, it's really hard. Everything that I've done um, in college is very like as soon as an opportunity comes, I take it. So like tomorrow I could have somebody come to me and say, hey, Matt, here's this. And it totally changes my trajectory. Um, but I can definitely say that going to Germany completely changed my life. I have a totally different outlook on the things I'm doing um, regarding my major in computer science. And I truly do believe the reason that I got the internship that I have lined up this summer is because of the uh, Berlin internship I did last summer. So, um, and I, I do want to highlight for all the people attending that there are plentiful study abroad opportunities um, being offered to honor students coming in now. Um, so be prepared for that. You will be overwhelmed with options. <laughs> yeah, good. It's a good problem to have. And, and obviously, you know, COVID uh, shut everything down and, and we're working our way back um, and putting together programs. Um, uh, our dean, um, my uh, co-director, um, this is something we're doing almost every day and trying to build these study abroad programs. And I mentioned that uh, I'll be leading the um, the Austria study abroad uh, this summer. And uh, we continue to, to just find opportunities and work with our global education office to do that. You can also do a, you know, a semester study abroad. It doesn't have to be a, a summer experience. Um, you know, will help you and our other resources on campus will 
help you kind of find the, the program that's right for you. Um, Mary Moni, I don't know if there are any questions that kind of relate to this in the chat that I we can get to quickly. There are lots of questions happening. Um, you've answered right. some of them based on curriculum with, you know, gen ed and um, what types of events for the two events, um, internship counting for high impact. So you've answered some of them along the way. What what goes into a cap senior capstone? Um, others are more about living, um, some other majors. So uh, a lot of it, when do the 10 credits need to be completed by? I think you've answered that as well. Mm -hmm. so, so far, the rest are per so yeah. to some extent right now about housing. Um, one is about a volunteer service, which I believe you've mentioned as well. So for now, if you want to continue, we can get to the questions, but we've got about 16 in the Q&A and okay. we've got about another five or six in the chat happening. So, okay. I did want to say, um, as far as the honor seminars, when do they have to be completed? You have four years. Um, we don't say your first year, your second year. Um, because some majors are are very prescripted. Um, I know nursing is is like that and, and some of the other fields uh, where it's really tight with uh, the courses um, that they give you and, and you're kind of required to take certain courses at a certain time. So you don't always have sort of the maneuverability or flexibility in your schedule to just slide courses in whenever you want to. Um, and that's why we give you the, the four years. I'd say most students complete these um, seminars because they count for general education. And most students are able to complete their general education within two years. Um, and sometimes there's there's a loose end here or there, but two years is I think a good uh, rule of thumb for that. And with study abroad, we had several uh, questions um, asking like how much do the programs typically cost? Is there a cost factor mm -hmm. in study abroad? Um, so we had a few, two or three of the same kind of question. Dr. Yeah, that's a great. I would be happy to answer some of those. Please, please go right ahead. So I can say from my experience when it comes to funding for study abroad. So there is a uh, funding opportunity through the Honors College now. Um, so you can get up to $1,500 for a study abroad opportunity. Um, and that comes on like a rolling basis basically every year. Um, I think you can get two of them um, in your time at the Honors College. Um, so that's a great funding resource. When it comes to the general cost of studying abroad, that really depends on your specific program. So if you're going with a group of students from, you know, Commonwealth University, it may be significantly cheaper than if you were to go, you know, alone, for example. Um, I can say specifically, so for my program, I actually didn't do it through the Honors College. I did it separate because it was in, uh, an internship abroad. So I couldn't really do it with other people, although I would have liked to. Um, Ma there's plenty of uh, opportunities and we have a full study abroad office that uh, works really closely with the Honors College and all the, the faculty directors that run these programs to make sure students have uh, resources to funding opportunities. So there is um, a Gilman scholarship that people can apply for. That's a national scholarship. Um, there's uh, the professional experience grant at Bloomsburg. Um, so that is one not even directly related to study abroad. That could be for any professional experience that you do. Um, in your time at Bloomsburg. Um, and I, to throw out a number, I'll ballpark, my program probably should have costed around like $10,000, but after all of my scholarships um, and the funding resources that in all honesty were not that hard to get, um, if you go through the process of applying for a study abroad, it's just as much effort to apply for these scholarships. It knocked my program down to probably only around $2,000 out of pocket. Um, which when you think about it, I was in Germany for 60 days. Um, that includes my hotel, uh, or not hotel, my housing, um, my food, everything else I was doing over there. So that's significantly cheap when you think about it. And it can go even cheaper. I know people that have gone um, completely, you know, paid for through like the Gilman Scholarship, like I mentioned, and all the under, other funding opportunities as well. And I can speak to that as a parent now of a first year student in honors. My son Tyler is going to be going to Austria this summer in July with Dr. Dorschler, and he um, applied for an honor scholarship. He got a $1,500 honor scholarship through the honors, which will actually help with the cost of his plane ticket, which is great, or whatever else he might need it for. He also applied for a professional experience grant, like Matt mentioned. He hasn't heard yet whether or not he'll get funding, um, but there are ways. The, the point of those types of financial services, if a student is a recipient, is 
to not have as many barriers up for a student financially if because we want them to have these experiences. Um, and then he's earning credit for an honors for an honors slash general education class for the course that he'll be taking in Austria this summer. So students do have to do the work. They have to apply. There's an application process with the honors college. There's an application process with a professional experience grant. Um, but there are ways to help support a student financially um, as long as the student's doing the legwork to potentially help you take less of that cost burden to help you do these kinds of things. And that's a tremendous um, piece of Honors College in particular. Um, honestly, I was not expecting that kind of scholarship from Honors for Tyler. So I was extremely excited, as was he. I mean, I would have been happy with $100. Um, but, you know, so it made his dream of going abroad in this particular course so much more real that we were able to make that work. So. Mm -hmm. And let me say, too, that these impact scholarships uh, will apply to other high impact experiences, not just the study abroad, although that's certainly a, a popular option. But if you were to do an internship, um, let's say um, over the summer here at Bloomsburg and you're like, darn, you know, the cost of housing uh, to be on campus. Um, you know, where do I come up with that money? Uh, apply for an impact scholarship uh, that could um, offset those costs uh, substantially and make the internship here possible. Um, for a semester study abroad, we are giving $2,000, not $1,500. So it really just depends on the, the project, uh, the experience, what you're doing. This is something I consult with um, a co-director with uh, when we get these applications. Uh, sometimes, you know, we're trying to be fair and, and set some precedence uh, for like a summer study abroad that's generally going to be $1,500 uh, for, for everybody. Um, but some of the other things, you know, people come in with unique projects and we will discuss and kind of figure out um, what a fair um, scholarship is um, that can hopefully um, make it meaningful and possible to do the experience. Um, and, uh, you know, given our resources, I think we have a, a lot of uh, available resources right now. Um, public knowledge in the paper just a couple of weeks ago that we had a, an enormous um, uh, donation given to the Honors College. And uh, all of that money uh, to the tune of five and a half million dollars is going to be funneled into scholarships and, and other resources for students. So I think if, if anything, we're going to be looking at a situation where we can help students even more in the future. Um, so we're, we're very happy and excited about that. Um, let me move on and uh, talk about the learning community, which I, I did mention already. Um, and there are a number of learning communities um, on campus and honors being one of them. Um, so it gives you uh, just a brief definition here. Uh, learning communities are groups of students. They share a common interest. Uh, and again, there's a business, there's a, an environmental, there's a creative arts and nursing, LC and others. Uh, and they pers participate in a variety of programs and field trips. I've, I've mentioned a number of those. Uh, they take courses together, such as the honors seminars. And um, uh, they're provided upper class mentors all under the direction of a faculty staff member. So I'm the faculty member uh, who works with the mentors. Uh, Hannah is a current mentor. Uh, and we meet, uh, um, meet weekly uh, to talk about uh, her mentees and other uh, mentees. Um, and we go over, uh, we, we plan events together. Uh, we discuss any, any concerns that come up uh, and, and any number of things. And then Sanai is a first year student who's, who's a mentee, but transitioning into a mentor role. So I, um, I was curious if you could talk a little bit about that experience, again, from a student perspective, what it's like to be a mentor and a mentee, what this first year experience is like. So um, students listening can better understand that. So I have been a mentor for two years. Um, unfortunately, and very sadly, I won't be returning next year as a mentor just because I'm graduating next semester, um, but I'm super sad about that. Um, so my first year, I had a really good mentor. Um, I really liked her because I came in and I didn't really know anyone. And she was like, kind of like a safe place that I could always go to. And she showed me where all my classes were um, and showed me where like resources were and everything like that. So she's kind of one of the reasons that I wanted to become a mentor. Um, and I really like helping people. Um, so 
that's also kind of why I wanted to become a mentor. And it's been really just like rewarding to watch um, mentees grow because a lot of times they come in and at least in my experience, a lot of my mentees have been like very shy in the beginning, like even just with one another, not just with me. Um, but then over, you know, the first month or two, um, they definitely opened up more with me and um, with each other. Um, in the two years that I've been a mentor, um, I still see like some of my mentees, you know, talking to each other. So that makes me really happy. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Sanai, anything you'd like to add? I can talk about being a mentee because I remember coming to college and like the whole honors college, I was always like, oh, I'm going to be so scared. Like, what do I have to do? This, that, this, that. And to always have your mentor, like that figure you can look up to who's done it so they can help you. They've been through it already. They've experienced it so they can answer your questions. It was really good to just have as like in the back of your mind, be like, I can always count on this person. I can rely on this person to like help me with what I'm going through. Yeah, yeah, uh, terrific. And and uh, the pictures um, you see here are, are actual uh, mentors uh, this year. And uh, this is during orientation, I believe, um, back in the fall. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to doing something similar. Just have welcome bags and snacks for everybody moving into Lycoming. That's where these pictures were taken. Um, and again, I think it reflects on the, the tight-knit community um, that we have uh, and the bonds um, that form between mentors and, and mentees and just amongst the honor students uh, in general. So something I think that really um, kind of gets to the heart of, of what we're all about. Um, are there any questions out there about the learning community or um, anything more residential or the first year experience, anything like that? We do have quite a few about residential. Let me just get to them here for you, Pete. Um, sure. One was our medical imaging students also eligible for honors given the structure of the program. I, I'm pretty sure, yes. Mm -hmm. um, if I want to live in Columbia my first year being a nursing major, is it possible to apply or join for honors my sophomore year? It is. Um, I, I would say that path is is generally more difficult. Um, we do have kind of added requirements for students who want to join uh, honors later on. Um, it's certainly possible. In fact, I met with a student today uh, who's a, a sophomore and wanted to join honors and sort of saw the benefits of doing so. So, it, you know, it is possible, but um, getting in on the ground floor is going to be easier um, than having to apply to be in honors once you're here. Um, so I don't know, take that into consideration. I know there's probably things to weigh there on, on either end. Um, and if you want to reach out later for any kind of specific advice or a conversation a a around that, I'm happy to happy to do that. I'll throw my contact information. Actually, it's on the last slide, um, but we can get to that later. Um, some other housing uh, questions. How does rooming in the honors dorm work in terms of students with a non-conforming gender identity, non-binary, et cetera? Uh-huh. That is a question really for residential life. They really deal with the... Um, the dorms and the specific housing. I knew. I know we do have on our on one floor. It's gender inclusive, um, and then I, I think on the other floors it is um, sort of more traditional men, women on the different floors. So I think it it sort of depends on the the demand that students have. What kind of housing are you looking for? And depending on the feedback we get, right, we can kind of sort the. Uh, floors, um, depending on what students want. But that's more of a question for ResLife. I don't I don't want to speak too much for them, um, but I know that there are different options for sure. And on the housing forms, it does ask if students want to live in gender neutral, inclusive housing. And so a student can also indicate that on the form as well. So they can um, identify that on the form. And I can put the residence life um, email address in the chat here in a moment. Um, I've already filled out the housing th through residence life and my coming hall was not given to me as an option. So I had to select a different hall. Will that be changed for me coming into the honors college? Yes. If you have already deposited for Bloomsburg, but you haven't selected uh, the honors college and you'd like to do so now. Um, and we hope after hearing this, yeah, right. You see, you see a lot of the benefits of, of doing that. Um, then 
what I would do is reach out and I can help you do this to make sure that we get you into the honors dedicated housing. Um, that should happen automatically once once you enter the honors college. Um, but if there are any questions at all, I can help with that to make sure that that is now that now shows up for residential life and you can be in the honors housing. And I did put the residence life email in the chat as well. So if you have questions about tonight or um, other housing questions, typically first year students don't actually get to designate what hall they want to live in. They might ask a preference, but first year students outside of honors will typically be placed in where there is space available in the other residence halls. Um, there was a question in here about communal bathrooms. I can answer that, Pete. Yes, like Cumming Hall is a communal bathroom, as are all the other halls except for Salt Hall, which is a suite style hall with private bathrooms. However, those are typically for upperclassmen. Usually juniors and seniors get housing preference in that particular dorm first. Um, and then sophomores and rarely first year students live in Salts. Um, but all the other residence halls would be communal bathrooms. Um, let me see here. Everything else for now is about classes or other things. If you want to keep going on, we can come back to these questions. Um, sure. sure, sure. Sounds good. Um... Here's a, a picture um, of our first year retreat that we uh, did for the first time. Um, and again, coming out of COVID, um, we're really trying to expand our opportunities and and do 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 group projects uh, and group trips together um, that weren't possible, of course, a year or two ago. Um, so Crystal Lake Camps, which is um, up near Hughesville, about a 45 minute hour uh, uh, trip north of here. Um, is where Crystal Lake Camps is located. Um, and we took a group of about 60 students, you recognize the green t-shirts by now, um, up there. And they're actually students from all three campuses of Commonwealth. So Lock Haven and Mansfield were represented as well as Bloomsburg. Um, so one of the cool things is that we're able to kind of bring um, students together from the different campuses uh, to, to do fun things um, or academic things. We're going to be doing that for our uh, capstone reception as well. So our community is is centered at Bloomsburg, as is the, the honors community of the other campuses are like centered at their campus. But there is a lot of collaboration and interaction um, between us. And that kind of makes it fun when you get to meet students uh, from, the, from the other campuses. Um, so anyways, Crystal Lake Camps Retreat for first year students happened in September. Uh, it was a two night overnight retreat. Um, and as you can see from the pictures, there's lots of uh, outdoory things to do, but it was more glamping uh, than real camping. It wasn't intense uh, with bears prowling by. It was in um, you know cabins uh, that had electricity and running water. And, and uh, so we had plenty of amenities. Um, but there are climbing towers, there was um, kayaking and swimming. Uh, we had our mentor, Mac, who does yoga instruction, lead yoga um, there, as you see in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, they provided all the food for us, and it was no charge to any of the students. This is just all, all extra, uh, trying to you know build community, um, kind of get off campus, to do something fun. Um, and we're planning to do it again uh, in the fall. In fact, I was just talking with uh, the camp um, staff uh, yesterday about getting a, a date on the calendar. So we want to continue to do these sorts of things um, that, that are going to be meaningful uh, experiences. And believe it or not, um, a bunch of students brought homework with them. <laughs> so sometimes, in, you know, in between the, the uh, kayaking and swimming, uh, you could see students, you know, studying and uh, writing a little bit, and uh, it wasn't overboard or anything. But I think it it was, um, you know, fun to see from the standpoint of honor students taking their academics so seriously and and still having fun uh, while doing it. Um, so honors college qualifications. Um, if you're attending the event tonight, you, you may already know this, but for anybody else, let me just kind of go over this very quickly. Um, as a first year student, if you were a current student or a transfer student, it would be different. Um, but as a first year entering student uh, at Bloomsburg, 
these are the minimum qualifications. Uh, if you have a GPA of 95 or above, um, you would be eligible to join the Honors College. All you'd need to do is um, in the um, information in your admissions portal or in some of the recent uh, uh, emails that you've received, um, there's a description of your eligibility and uh, accept your offer button uh, that you can click. Uh, no essay is required uh, just on the basis of your high GPA. Um, we think you are honors uh, worthy and eligible. If your GPA is in that second category of 90 to 94, nine, um, we think you're eligible for honors, but we would um, um, have you apply for a seat and that would entail submitting an essay. And there are two prompts um, that you could choose from. And then also include any supplemental materials that you wanted to. Um, it could be, I've seen resumes that students submit uh, to showcase all the work that they've done, all the highlights, accolades, awards, honors, and things like that. Um, I've had students describe, in addition to the essay, like um, a uh, like a senior project that they've done or community service that they've done or some kind of leadership, uh, all sorts of different things that they might include in the supplemental materials. If you are in the creative arts, uh, you can submit what would be the equivalent of a portfolio if you wanted to, some some images or pictures of your creative works, um, you know, and that would go, that would, that would show us that, that you're, you know, um, um, multi-dimensional, you have talents outside of maybe the, the traditional academics or something that your GPA doesn't doesn't highlight um, on paper, um, that you have um, you know music or theater or artistic abilities. So honors college qualifications, if anybody has a question about those, I'm happy to answer. And uh, we're really coming to the end and we can kind of open it up for um, more informal Q&A. Um, but in terms of reaching out and staying in contact, uh, feel free to email me uh, anytime you'd like um, with any questions. Again, I'm the first year experience director, Pete Dorschler. Um, there is my office uh, phone. Um, and then Dr. Ensminger, the high impact experience here at Bloomsburg. Uh, Dr. Hintz, our interim dean who oversees the Honors College across the three campuses, and um, Alexander Olney is our secretary, and you might uh, see correspondence from her as well. Um, so with that, um, let me ask the students if there's anything else, uh, and I know that Matt had to, to leave, unfortunately, a little bit early, but Anna and I, anything else that you'd like to comment on just your honors experience thus far? Something I've forgotten to say uh, from a student perspective, like what would you point to as maybe the meaningful thing? Um, I think that you definitely did a pretty good job of covering it all. Um, I would just add that I definitely met all of my really good friends friends um through honors and like my best friend here uh we're both mentors and we're both in honors um so it's nice to be able to like work with her as a mentor but um I just like know that that's going to be like a lifelong friendship so that was definitely um probably one of my favorite things that I have gotten out of honors and I do hear that a lot that that students have met their best friends that first year like homing hall in the seminars um, and they become really good friends often with their mentors. So that is a common refrain that I hear. So now you were going to say something too. I was just going to say my biggest thing coming into the honors college, I was really stressed out when not, I'm not going to say don't be stressed, but also you have a lot of time to get all your requirements done. So it's not like you have to be hyper focused on getting everything done back to back. You have time to just like take a deep breath, relax, like you have time to get everything done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that, too. Um, and again, we're here uh, as support. And I think that's the main thing is that college is going to be difficult um, at some point of, in various ways. And the great thing about the Honors College is that we're here to support you through all of that um, with academic supports. Um, I'll mention that in the next couple of weeks, we have uh, final exam um, tutoring that we're offering. 
we had a scheduling event where we're, we've invited the um, instructors who are teaching honor seminars in the fall to come in um, and, and meet students in person. So it's a meet your professor event, as we're calling it. Um, if you take a look at an honor seminar title and you're like, eh, I don't know about that, you know, it doesn't sound like my kind of thing, but give it a chance. Come meet the professor, talk to them about what the course is really about. You know, sometimes titles can be misleading or, you know, once you once you start a conversation about it, you might realize, hey, that sounds pretty cool. And so that's the kind of thing we can do here and um, again, we have some kind of informal advising that we can do to help students figure out how to schedule for classes and, and uh, thinking about how best to meet the honors requirements and how that lines up with your um, program requirements and really want to get through, you know, in the three, four years that you're going to be here and fit in those high impact experiences, um, study abroads and internships, uh, research with professors and apply for those uh, impact scholarships that are gonna make everything possible. Um, so with that, uh, I think we can open it up for Q&A if there are additional questions, I'm happy to answer. And, and thanks again to the students uh, for being here and, and helping kind of guide this conversation. And uh, um, let's see what kind of questions we have. So Pete, we have, we have quite a few in the Q&A, so we're just gonna start from the oldest on down. Some of them are, um the same questions. So I'll just, I'll just click answer live, but I thought it'd be better maybe answer live so people can hear the answer because they may all have similar questions. So is there a group of undecided students in honors or, or is it um, a negative impact if someone is undecided about a major to be in honors? There are uh, undecided students and exploratory students, and that is perfectly fine. I, I personally love that because honor students have a lot of abilities, they're high achieving, but they may not have settled on a particular field of study or a major. And why not come in and explore and take classes and kind of figure out what you wanna do. And by taking a couple of honor seminars and maybe dabbling a little bit here and there, that can really kind of chart your course and determine a direction for you. So so I really love that that approach. And a lot of students change majors too. I mean, that's, that, that's part of the process. And uh, it's like changing a job. Um, you know, you're going to run into a wall maybe or, you know, a tough class or you're going to realize, you know, this this is not for me. I thought I wanted to do a, accounting, but, you know, I guess I guess I'm not cut out for it. You know, all kinds of things happen um, just just uh, that, that, that take you in a different direction. Uh, it happened to me and it, I think it happens to almost every student at some point. Um, and uh, that's what we're here to do. You know, the, the small tight knit community and all the resources we offer can, um, you know, through the conversations that you have with people, um, get you to realize that, yeah, I need to try something different or I really like this or I wanna try more of that. Um, so that's what we're here for. How does scheduling work with the Honors College with the classes necessary for your major? Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, you have an academic advisor um, uh, whether that's in bio or political science or, you know, whatever major, um, you have. And if you are an undecided exploratory student, you would also have, um, an advising office that could help you with kind of general questions about, um, you know, what courses to take courses for your major, uh, courses for, let's say you were thinking about adding a minor, um, general education courses. So all of that is handled by, um, like an academic advisor in your program. Um, we help on the honor side of things, um, certainly with the seminars, but all the other requirements to the service, the events. Um, we're there to, to make sure that you are uh, meeting those requirements, certainly, uh, to be able to stay in honors if you have questions about any of it. Um, and again, um, really hosting the kinds of events like the Meet Your My Professor event um, that gives you some information and, um, I don't know, a chance to really better understand what direction you want to go, what courses you want to take. So we're there to kind of offer all of that for you on top of the academic advising you would receive from your program. Okay. Um, does it hinder me to be a commuter and be in the Honors College? Uh, no, we have commuters, um, you know, from local high schools. Uh, I don't know how many, but I know personally 
uh, since I lived around the area. Um, I can think of three or four uh, right off the top of my head. In fact, we have um, a mentor was Claire. I think she she commuted at one point. So I, you know, I again a number of students who do that. Um, is there a disadvantage? You can still be in honors. You wouldn't live in Lycoming, obviously, right? You'd be a commuter. So there, there is one, uh, that, I guess, piece of the experience that you wouldn't have, um, but everything else you'd have available to you, all the, all the common space, all the activities and events and service and courses, and you'd have a mentor, everything else you, you'd have. And my, my son actually, um, while he lives on campus and with a friend from high school who's also in honors, he has friends in his major who are who is a commuter who is also in honors, and they have lunch twice a week together, um, and the student, you know, so the, he he is involved in other things as well on campus as a commuter, and I don't, I don't get the sense from my son that he feels disconnected in any way. It's really about how much the student is also taking advantage of what is available to them as a commuter, um, which is key. Yeah, and I, I would add just really briefly that we um, intentionally plan at least some of our events uh, during the day. Uh, so honors, so I'm sorry, so commuters can attend. You know, often commuters might leave campus, you know, four or five o'clock or something like that. And if we're always hosting evening events, if all our, all of our events are at seven or eight o'clock, that's going to disadvantage the commuters. So we very intentionally plan events, at least some of the events during the day uh, so that commuters are more likely to attend those. I think you may have answered this um, with the four years, but for the requirements of staying within the Honors College, how long does a student have to fulfill each of those requirements? Um, well, it really depends. Um, again, I'm having a little trouble with the, uh, oh, here we go. I'll just have to get out of it. I go back to the program requirements. So the volunteer service hours, those are um, annual requirements. So August to August. Um, you can even use uh, like summer service to wrap up the previous years, 16 hours, or you can apply them to the upcoming years. So we're very flexible with that. So that's that's um, per year. The events are per semester, as you see there. Um, the courses, the nine credits of seminars are over the course of your four years. And that one add-on credit is for the capstone. Typically, you do in your junior or senior year. Um, and the high impact experiences can happen anytime. Um, Marimoni's son, Tyler, who's going to um, Austria is a first year student. So he's already jumping in um, and taking advantage of that, um, which is great. And, and you could too. It, it really depends on what you want to do. And we can help advise you uh, to determine uh, if now's the right time for a study abroad or an internship. Often internships are more junior and senior year because they line up with your academic program's expectations of when you would do an internship. Not always, but that's that's often the case. Um, how would dual enrollment credits transfer over with being in the Honors College? And I, I can mm -hmm. see what's that, Pete. I mean, if, yeah, go ahead. Um, so if you are in, taking AP classes or college courses through another college, community college, what have you, one, we need those official AP scores sent directly from College Board. Um, admissions will accept them, and then we send them on to the registrar to determine if you've met the minimum score required to earn potential college credit. Typically, you have to score at least a three. Um, some of them, a few of them, you have to have at least a four, and that dictates then how many college credits or what courses you're receiving credit for at Commonwealth. For dual enrollment, if you're at taking courses through another college, whether community college or another four-year school, we also need those official transcripts directly from that college. We will not accept the grade for a dual enrollment course from your high school. It has to come officially from the college with whom you're taking the course. You contact their registrar or records office. They send it to admissions. We then will um, review that to see what kind of credit you may receive. Depending on how those courses transfer in, will dictate, regardless if you're in the Honors College or not, will dictate how those are being used then at Commonwealth, potentially within your major, for general education requirements or for electives. So it all depends on how they transfer in. So if you are one of those students, my, stu my son transferred in 20 credits between AP and dual enrollment. Um, a friend of his transferred in almost 30. Um, now my son had about of his 20, I think eight of those were used in electives and some are, the others are being used in general education requirements. So it does depend on how they transfer, but those are the documents that we need in order for you to earn credit. Um, do clinical hours or externship hours count towards the impact requirements? 
Um, like I, suspension, for example, would would a yeah, yeah, cer certainly uh, something like that. A, a practicum um, uh, would could apply for one of the high impact experiences. I think that's a fairly common thing that that a nursing uh, a student can do and does. Um, and yeah, again, working with your academic advisor and then working with um, either myself or Dr. Ensminger, the co-director, uh, to you know fill out a, a little form that says, this is what my high impact experience is going to be. I'm going to apply my nursing practicum to it. Um, and then we would go over the requirements for that. So absolutely, you can count those types of things. Um, but we, we want to make them honors experiences too. And that's where some of the, the added um, work might come in, either the reflection for the, the minor experience or more of a research project. So if you were to do a, a practicum and you wanted to make it a, a, a major experience, a capstone project, you would take that, that practicum and, um, you know, devise a, a research project around that experience. Um, like if you are working with a particular kind of patient um, in a hospital setting, um, maybe that would be an opportunity to explore um, a particular disease or, or something um, and turn that into a research project. So we would work with you on that and um, coordinate with your program advisor to make sure that everybody was uh, lockstep working together and turning this experience into the capstone project that you want it to be. Okay. Um, how easy is it to balance playing a college sport with the honors college? Time to do volunteering, events, games, practices? Um, not going to lie, that's probably challenging um, for sure. Uh, you'd have to have very good time management skills. Um, uh, we do have students that are very involved in all sorts of things um, who are on athletic teams, who play in the band, who do a lot of theater, right? All of which can be very time consuming. Um, the uh, graduating um, starting quarterback on the Bloomsburg football team is a decorated honor student, um, had a tremendous uh, capstone project and will be graduating. You know, he had to balance uh, football with being in honors college. He was able to do it. Um, certainly it's challenging, but it's doable. And again, I'll just go back to resources. We're here to to help you navigate through all that. You know, you don't have to do it uh, alone. Um, and that's what our mentors are, are here for and all of us, all, all the staff and, and the professors, right? They're there to help you as well. Um. Would it be better to join the on honors or is that depending on how you learn or which one you choose? Will the honors change the way of learning for people? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, well, I'd say that our honors seminars, if we kind of go back to that, um, there certainly is, is a different kind of class. Um, I think they're better able to accommodate different learning styles if, if that's kind of what the question is about. Again, more project-based, experiential-based, uh, discussion-based learning um, that's going to be different than sort of a, a more traditional lecture style that you find in in uh, in many other classes, certainly not every class. But um, yeah, I think the honor seminars are a little more diverse in terms of their ability to offer uh, content and pedagogical approaches to um, that, that fit different learning styles. For those I have applied, when will decisions be made? Um, I'm assuming these are potentially for students who submitted essays. Uh huh. Yes. Um, yeah. So, so there there are a limited number of seats in the honors college. Um, we do have a goal um, of of 200 students uh, for our entering class at Bloomsburg. The other campuses have uh, uh, other goals. Um, so we are nearly at our uh, at the halfway point. Um, and, you know, we'll continue to add students either in that, that, that tier of 95 and above, uh, if you decide to join kind of automatic acceptance, if you are in that, that second group, uh, that requires an essay and supplemental materials, we evaluate those on a rolling basis. 
Uh, we receive an essay, you know, we will read the essay, we'll review the materials. We try to make a decision within a week or two, um, just depending on how busy we get, but we try to have a pretty fast turnaround so that, um, you know, you're aware of where you stand with honors and can make a, a, an informed decision of, of whether you decide to, you know, commit to Bloomsburg or not. Um, but we do have a limited number of seats and obviously as a tight knit community with, you know, we have a lot of resources, but, but limited resources at the same time, uh, we want to keep our numbers relatively small so that we can continue to offer the same quality, uh, resources to everybody. So, um, you know, keeping, keeping the number capped, uh, has its, as its, its advantages. Could you request a mentor if needed? Uh, every first year student will be assigned a mentor. Um, and so we have um, 20 mentors who are going to be on staff uh, next uh, in, in the fall, starting in the fall. Um, if you were an incoming first year student in the Honors College, you would be uh, paired with a mentor. And we do that often by looking at your um, major if you've declared a major, right? So uh, an incoming nursing student we would try to pair you with um, a mentor who's a nursing student um, or a related field at least. Um, yeah, so everybody receives one and, you know, um, yeah, that, that seems to work pretty well. I don't, I don't uh, think there are usually any, any problems with that um, kind of system that we have in place. Uh, can we participate in other LC activities while in honors? Yes. Uh, again, nursing as an example, if you're a nursing student and you decide to join honors, that doesn't prevent you from going over to the nursing ALC. And if they have our hosting event, you can you can join their event. So what if you accept the honors offer, but then you want to change your mind? How would you go about that? Um, let us know and, and we can uh, take you off uh, the list and, and be sorry to lose you. And certainly we we hope we could have a conversation with you to, to learn um, about your decision, but uh, certainly we, we would respect that and uh, we could we could process that for you. Absolutely. Um, the question, some of this is about GPA. What is the requirement based on the standard 4.0 GPA? I think you went over that, the 95, um, mm -hmm. their GPA there. Right. To remain in honors, uh, you need a 3.0. And uh, you have to be in good standing, meaning um, keep up with your volunteer service hours, uh, your events. And by the time you graduate, you have to complete those uh, impact experiences in a capstone project uh, and the 10 credits. So all those requirements really have to be fulfilled. And depending on a semester or year basis, or certainly by the time you graduate, everything has to be in place with a 3.0. Uh, since applying, my GPA has risen. I think now I would be above a 95. Would I be able to turn in this transcript so this GPA is considered? Um, sure, reach out to me. And if, if something like that has happened, so, so the, the application you submitted to Commonwealth, whenever that was, um, you know, had a, had a different GPA uh, and you were in that second group and now your GPA has changed, um, certainly reach out to me and we can we can talk about that. Um, there's a question about how engaging is the honors program, but I think you've done a good job, uh, Pete, about answering that. So if there's more questions like that one, just let us know. Um, so are there any on-campus downtime that honors have together? I think you've answered some of that too in terms of, but I don't know if maybe the students want to mention anything if they've done things outside of honors together potentially as well. Um, I know a lot of my friends here are in honors like on my floor and sometimes we honestly just meet up in the lounge and play like uno so like when we all have downtime we just like come to one of the lounges if they're empty and just hang out with each other it doesn't have to be like we just go work together too but it's also just a way to have fun and like the common space that we have yeah we do have a, a brand new wing um of like homing hall on the ground floor if, if you were to visit and uh new dedicated sort of social spaces um, and I see students hanging out there all the time. It's really become a, a very kind of active hub uh, for the Honors College. Um, and so I think there is just a lot of, you know, 
downtime in terms of yeah, hanging out, socializing, studying together. Uh, I see that happening all the time. Um, is it hard to get into programs and classes when signing up? I'm not quite sure if they mean, is it hard to get into the honors classes or others? Well, honors students uh, do get priority scheduling. Um, so this year they will be scheduling on April 9th for the fall semester coming up. Um, and there are a couple of other groups of students like athletes, um, veterans, um, who also, uh, get that, um, uh, distinction. Uh, everybody else though, um, registers for classes after that and kind of on a, a, a tiered basis, depending on how many credits you have. So that is a really nice perk of being in the Honors College um, when you schedule your courses, when you're first in line, um, you're not more than likely not going to be on a, on a wait list. You're going to get the classes that you want. Um, you won't have to go through sort of end up switching classes, you know, last minute if you don't get something you want and you see a seat open up somewhere else, like a lot of the juggling that that, that is typical. Um, you wouldn't run into that. Um, what exactly is the benefit of honors other than just the experiences, prestige on your transcript, better job opportunities? I don't know if one of the if one of the two students maybe want to answer that as well. Yeah, what do you see as the benefit of being in honors and being a mentor too? Well, for me, being a mentor has definitely um, improved my leadership skills and communication skills. Um, I feel like when I was in high school and even like my first year here, I, I was like very shy. But since becoming a mentor, it like kind of like opened me up and like took me out of my shell, um, which is super nice. Um, obviously, it also like really helps with the leadership skills, which um, are, you know, obviously important in any field. Um, so I would say that. Um, and just like in general, being in honors, uh, well, like I mentioned earlier, I have like a good group of friends in honors. Um, it gives me, you know, like opportunities to do service. Um, opportunities to take classes that I probably wouldn't have otherwise taken. Um, a few semesters ago, I took an honors music listening class. And if I wasn't in honors, I probably would never have taken um, a music listening class just because I'm a science major. Um, but that class was actually really interesting and I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. So I would say that as well. I, I would go back to the um, the scholarships too, um, and though those can be really meaningful to allow you to do the sorts of things that you might not be thinking about. Um, college is very expensive, and if you're thinking about you know lining up all of your financial resources to be able to afford coming here, and then the the idea of a study abroad or an internship off campus just seems impossible uh, to manage. You know, those scholarships can really help make those things possible. And that's what could really, as Matt was discussing with his internship in Berlin, really define your experience um, and, and set you apart uh, when you are looking at graduate schools or jobs. Um, so that's what we're we're proud to offer that. And I think that's a that could be a difference maker for a lot of students. There's two similar questions. Um, I'm in the nursing program. Is there a private nursing study group? And the other one is similar. Are there study groups for honors students majoring majoring together? I think those happen organically. We we don't really set them up per se, um, but I think students uh, find each other. Again, the tight knit community in Lycoming Hall. Um, you meet your friends, um, maybe even a roommate. Uh, in your same major and you, you know, taking the same classes together, whether it's an honor seminar or like an intro chemistry class. And, you know, you form your study groups and your friendship groups. And I think all that just happens organically. Um, I think we touched upon this, but just to make sure if my planned roommate is considering honors, the honors program and I want to remain 
in the nursing LC in Columbia, can she live with me there in Columbia and still be part of honors? Oh, that's a tricky one. I mean, we're trying really hard not to um, pull our honor students outside of Lycoming or a de dedicated housing. Um, once we do that with one student, then there's kind of, you know, we're trying to prevent a ripple effect of having a lot of students living in other dorms. And we make the exception for the athletes um, for, for good reason. You know, the, the, the team chemistry is important. Um, but that's something we can certainly talk about, but but our general policy has been not to allow that just to kind of keep the honors cohort together. So you could bring your friend over to Lycoming. Um, that could certainly work. So we have four questions left. We're about at the hour and a half mark. So I say maybe we take those last four and, and this was being recorded. So we will be sharing this out in the next week or two with, with students. We just have to have time to edit it if we need to in terms of the beginning time before we started. Um, so the last four questions, um, is, and this might be for, for Hannah and Sinai, is being in honors a lot more stressful or is it less stressful depending on your major and the programs that you're involved in? I thought it was going to be more stressful than it actually was because again you have a lot of time to get everything that you need done so as long as you have time management skills and you don't wait till the last minute to get everything done you'll definitely be okay i was gonna say pretty much the same thing um i originally thought that it was going to be a lot more but i really don't think it is you just have to have good time management skills honestly yeah and no, i think that goes back to this idea of the um, honors college experience being qualitatively different. Um, it's not more of the same, it's just a different type of experience. And we're really not trying to um, add all kinds of things onto your already full plate because we know honor students are um, usually the most engaged, active students. They're involved in clubs. Um, they are uh, doing the events in the service. Um, they're out there being active every single day and they're high achieving in the classroom too. So they're, they're, they are studying a lot. And, you know, so we don't want to add uh, um, all kinds of additional pressure and stress on, onto your lives that way. But we do want to offer you a different sort of experience that we hope could be meaningful for you. And the last two questions, um, what does studying abroad in Italy look like? And are there any specific majors attached to it? Ah. Um, that is a good question. The uh, study abroad experience in Italy um, is led by a faculty in the sciences and the course is specifically about Galileo. <clears throat> so um, I could certainly send you more information about that specifically. Um, and I don't know much more about it than that, to be honest with you. Um, but I could put you in contact with the faculty member. And then the last question, and thank you everyone for all of your questions. We, we've lost about half the group um, at the hour and a half mark, and that's okay. They were with us for right up to the end. Um, but thank you for everyone else who has remained with us. So our last question is, so when you have classes, about how many days and times could they be our classes on the weekend? Uh, students, go ahead. You know, you know that better than I do. So um, there's a couple different options for this. Um, you're never gonna have a class on the weekend. Um, most classes are either going to be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for 50 minutes, or they can be Tuesday and Thursday for an hour and 15 minutes, or they could just meet once a week. Uh, typically, it's more like a night class, like a six to nine, um, and that would be like the only time that you had that class during the week, and I don't think that there's any other like variations of meeting times. I do have a Monday, Wednesday class from 3 to 4.15. So again, it's only like twice a week, just not Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday. And it also depend, uh, my son is a biochemistry major, so he has quite a few four credit courses that have lab components. So he will have a three credit lecture, which could be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for 50 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes. And then he has a, he has a lab typically twice a week for potentially up to three hours. So it does depend on the major, depends on if the four credit course has a lab attached to it. 
Um, they typically, the lab and lecture sometimes are back to back, but not typically. Um, they're also not always taught by the same professor, which is um, actually great because students get a variety of faculty who are teaching them. Um, and it's not like high school. You're not all moving through classes in terms of you're not going down a hallway together. Yes, people are moving around in general at the same times, but your classes are so varied in your majors and when you're choosing and there's so many sections of each class. It's not one section for a thousand students going to the same class. Um, so, you know, unlike high school, you're all in class, you're all in school eight to three. It's so varied when you're in college and your, your time is your time outside of class. And, you know, you have to build in studying time and work time outside of lecture or lab time. That's a very bit, that's an expectation of faculty when you're in college is it's much more independent learning outside of class as well. So um, we had another one final question and then we will end. Um, so oh, somebody's just trying to email me. Oh, let me retype my email to the student. And then finally, what's the name of the professor running the Italy trip? Um, let me get you that information because I'm not, I don't have that right in front of me. Well, I want to thank everyone for your time, certainly Dr. Dorschler and our students and um, for everyone who attended this evening. And we will get this to you shortly in an email as well with the recording. Um, continue to stay in touch with either admissions or with Dr. Dorschler directly um, about honors. So again, thank you for your time this evening and I hope everyone has a great evening. Yeah, and thank you to the students, uh, Sinai and Hannah and, and Matt, who had to leave early. Thank you so much for being here and offering your perspective. And um, thanks to everybody who joined tonight. Please reach out if you have questions. That's what I'm here for. Uh, I want you to be well-informed when you're making your decisions. And um, I really want to stress that I think Honors College is great and offers a ton of opportunities and a lot of benefits and reasons for joining. So, um, you know, please consider and reach out with questions and thanks for coming tonight. Thank you, everyone.